We are here at AMS Institute for Metropolitan Solutions, where we will have an interview with Lisbeth van Zonen, the academic director of the Center for Bold Cities. I will ask her some questions about smart cities, big data, but especially about the role of citizens in these developments. Hi Lisbeth, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I want to ask you some questions about uh, smart cities, big data, and uh, also about the role of citizens in the developments that take place. And first of all, um, there's a lot of attention to the topic of smart cities and to big data. And I wonder uh, who exactly are the stakeholders that want to create these kinds of cities. If you wonder who are the main stakeholders in smart cities, then what you see is that first and foremost uh, these developments have been driven by the giant corporations, the platforms, the IT companies. Mm -hmm. And there are many examples of how they have gone to specific cities to, uh, to push their products, their software, their hardware to city governments. There's for instance a, a Japanese company that works with the city of Copenhagen and has created a data city exchange for them and they're now building uh, the big data city lab for them and that's, so that's, that's very close cooperation between a specific company and a city government. Mm -hmm. City governments of course have a vested interest in these applications because it enables them to improve their services mm -hmm. and specifically with environmental sensoring, measuring air quality, measuring uh, the level of the water for instance, which is very important in the city of the Netherlands or in the cities of the Netherlands because mm -hmm. we are below sea level. Water management, electricity, um, the air quality, these are uh, issues in cities that are becoming increasingly important and that can be measured much better with th the new technologies. Yeah. So companies, cities, um, increasingly universities have become part of these developments as well. They were part of it already because they are, the, they are behind these technological innovations. But social scientists, humanities scholars also begin to think about what does this mean for citizens, for people who live in cities like this. And that, that is until now a, a, a very often ignored question. Uh, so what you see is that applications are being developed without asking the people who use it, what do you want? How do you want to use it? What, how, what role does it play in your everyday life? So now everybody's trying to engage citizens in these smart city developments and you get things like uh, um, citizen science movements, citizen monitoring movements and that all collaborates into building that smart city. It's important that citizens participate because otherwise these cities are becoming almost the victim of the big companies and the big companies are likely to take over control over city management. So there's a, there's, there's, there are a lot of stakeholders yeah. and there are a lot of tensions between them. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of uh, advocates of smart cities but also there are many critiques on, on smarter cities and when you look at, uh, at it from the perspective of citizens then I wonder what is in it for them. For citizens, there's, there are both enormous advantages and considerable risks. And if we talk about the advantages first, then you see across the world a number of applications being developed that make everyday life in the city so much easier and sometimes are also healthier. Mm -hmm. For instance, there are all kinds of apps that help you measure air quality uh, so that you can decide, do I take the car to work or can I take the bicycle? And if you live in a city where you can always take the bicycle, like here in Amsterdam, such an app tells you which route is the less polluted route today, so you can change your route. So that, that is an enormous advantage. Um, the same goes for, for all kinds of mobility issues like traffic jams, where do I put my car when I start, when I want to park? Um, uh, and there, there's all kinds of good applications there that I think citizens would like that they wouldn't think too much about it and, and they probably give up their data for that purpose quite eagerly on the other hand um, you can see that there's considerable risk 
all these systems are based on machine learning and artificial intelligence, and they're, they're very badly equipped to deal with mistakes. Stakeholders um, do this differently as well. So the banks are a good example of how you should do it. If your credit card is now used somewhere uh, uh, where, you are, where you obviously are not, in Hong Kong, let's say that, mm -hmm. um, then they call you or they send you a text and say, are you in Hong Kong? And you say no, and so your card is being blocked. Yeah. When a fault in the system occurs, a mistake is made, and you're being wrongly identified as someone, or the, the wrong preference is given, or whatever, then it's very, very hard to immediately um, change that and repair that. So there's a risk of data, not necessarily abuse, but data mistakes. So we often talk about abuse and hackers and, 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 and crime, and but the, the it's a risk that is as big as that is of data mistakes. Data mistakes are a very much neglected issue, but are very, very important in the everyday lives of citizens. And when data mistakes are made, that's when citizens see that there's a data system behind their life. And that's when they, be, they wake up, so to speak, mm -hmm. and say, oh, wait, what's going on there? How do you know all of this? Why do you think you know all of this? So that the, the notion of data mistake needs more attention in this uh, field. Uh, as a last question, if cities are to take serious the role of citizens in the creation of more smart cities, uh, what would you say that they should focus on? If you realize that the smart city is a project of many different stakeholders, um, then the way to bring it forward in a socially responsible way is to, to understand that there are at least three stakeholders, three types of stakeholders that play a role here. Um, maybe even four. These are individual citizens, NGOs, the corporations, and governments. And individual citizens should become a little bit more data literate. They should know what is going on with data, with new technologies, and at the moment they have very little idea about what a smart city is. If you ask them, you know what a smart city is, then overall they have no clue. Having said that, it's also important to realize that it's impossible to get enough information for an individual citizen to know what is going on. So there's always another role to play for uh, non-governmental organizations, for instance, to put issues like privacy on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And then privacy is not only the right to protect yourself, but it ha that has also to do with data ownership and uh, accountability and um, transparency. So there's a role for NGOs there to continuously hammer that on the political agenda, but also on the media and the news media's agenda. Corporations have a responsibility. They don't take that yet, but in European legislation from 2018, they will be forced to become more accountable, more transparent, and they are facing huge, huge fines if they don't comply with European privacy regulation. That, that's one example of a regulatory framework there are others in other parts of the world, but that's an example of the role um, politics and governments could play. There's a much wider discussion going on about human rights in, in the context of digital and data developments, and one of the new human rights that are, are very much in discussion at the moment is the right not to be measured by censoring system, by systems, by artificial intelligence, or uh, by machine learning uh, systems, machine learning, yeah machine learning systems, that's what we should call it. Um, so as a multi-stakeholder project, it's also a, m a multiple responsibility to make sure that the city, which is, is historically a safe, public, free space for people to live their lives and to experiment and do new things, mm -hmm. um, all of that should be maintained in a collaboration of these different stakeholders. So that the promise of these big data and big technologies to make our city lives better is a promise that is kept, that is realized, and that doesn't make place for all these more frightening developments uh, that remind us of Big Brother or The Circle or whatever kind of sci-fi you have in this uh, area. Okay, thanks a lot for your interesting insights about uh, citizens and smart cities and big data. Uh, thanks a lot. You're very welcome.